All right, so it's time for another starter pack. This is a kind of a quick guide to those albums that I feel like are essential for this particular subgenre of progressive rock. I love, as you know, progressive rock, and I love all the little subgenres that it's kind of developed over the years. I've already created a few. I've done one for retro prog and for neo prog and for progressive metal as well as brutal metal. Uh, this one uh, is going to be kind of a double pack. So. Uh, this one is going to be contemporary progressive rock as well as uh, later on this week alternative modern progressive rock and these two are very closely linked so that's why I'm kind of doing this as a one-two punch but there is a specific kind of a dividing line and that line does kind of wiggle quite a bit I'm going to spend a couple minutes right off the get-go to kind of define what I mean by contemporary progressive rock this kind of utilizes the technique that was uh, brought forward by such bands from the 70s that like shoved off all preconceived notions of what music should be and just play what they want. A lot of these bands wouldn't even really agree to the fact that they would be labeled as progressive rock and I think in that sense it really qualifies them for this particular type of subgenre. This is the ones that utilize like uh, uh, an emphasis on atmosphere of longer stretches of music they don't allow themselves to be plunked down by any modern zeitgeist and that's what really differentiates and divides these guys from say the modern progressive rock movements so there is a little bit of a crossover between the two and as i was thinking about which ones fell into the contemporary and which ones fell into more of the modern bands and artists kind of flip-flop between the two but i kind of i kind of took a look at which ones in terms of the modern were really kind of basing themselves in the current climate of the time and which ones were looking further outside of that so let's dive into the starter pack for the contemporary progressive rock artists now these guys as always i'm going to have five that are mandatory listens or required listens uh, and from there, I'm going to have one or two albums of theirs that I'm going to say, again, are a required listen. And then from there, it's going to be a recommended listen. So it's going to be like, this is what you need to listen to as a quick guide. And if you like that, you can explore a little bit more from there. So diving in, I'm going to start off with arguably the most popular of all progressive rock artists and bands. Um, and that is Porcupine Tree and Steven Wilson. I'm going to combine these two into one because even though it's two separate entities, it was Steven Wilson at the, the helm, even though um, the band behind a Porcupine Tree did contribute quite a bit, and I don't want to diminish their ideologies behind it, but at the same time, I didn't want to sacrifice somebody else's placement, even though the two are very, very close together. The required listenings that I will recommend is Fear of a Blank Planet from Porcupine Tree and The Raven That Refused to Sing from Steven Wilson. These two really show us you can do whatever you want within this landscape. Uh, Fear of a Blank Planet is almost a metal album at times, but it's also very somber and very subtle. And The Raven That Refused to Sing is a giant homage and love letter to the progressive rock of the past, while continuing to push forward. Now, if you like those, go on to Hand Cannot Erase by Stephen Wilson, as well as The Sky Moves Sideways for Porcupine Tree. Sky Moves Sideways is the one that really pushed the boundaries in terms of that space rock, that acid rock. Uh, the title track that book ends the album is just a gorgeous mind journey and hand cannot erase is still one that i will return to many years later and i'm still picking out things that i'm enjoying off of this album from there we go to anathema or atama or however you want to pronounce it i pronounce it anathema so that's how i'm going to pronounce it from this point on uh, these guys are great at creating atmosphere of creating the build-ups and the one that i have to say is required listen is the one that got me into the band which is weather systems this has such beautiful and uh, notable tracks such as Untouchables Part 1 and 2 that open the album up, um, the one that I love which is The Storm Before the Calm. This one is such a powerful track and really really shows what the band is made out of. Uh, it has uh, the beginning at the end and it also showcases their just raw ability to get into some like very intimate ideas such as the last one of internal landscape and it's just it, it heartbreaks you just how how intimate they can get so from there if you love that one go to uh we're here because we're here the title track alone 
always makes me weep and this is one that I will go to when I'm having a really really bad day. From there we'll go on to Gaspacho. They are a masters of creating that really dark atmosphere um, while still having very uplifting uh, messages and metaphors. The lyrical content on this is just brilliant. This time it'll be two albums that I recommend will be Night and TikTok. These two albums followed one another and they were what got me into uh, Gaspacho. Uh, just great, great tracks there. Uh, from the recommended pieces, I'm going to go for Demon as well as March of Ghosts. Both of these kind of do the same thing as Night and TikTok, being very dark, but also very light as well. Demon, just providing how like dark and almost evil a track can be at times. Really, really great stuff in that. The fourth one that I would recommend checking out is Riverside. Uh, Riverside is a little bit more heavy. Uh, the one that I highly recommend and the one that I would say is required listening to is Anno Domini High Definition or ADHD. Even though some people have called it like a EP, I find it's a full length LP and the amount of music that they're able to cram in on such a short period of time is just dripping in glory. It, I feel it's their peak of their uh, career. It's heavy hitting, it's got meaty hooks, meaty catches. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, from there, definitely go into their more popular stuff such as the Second Life Syndrome and Rapid Eye Movement. These are the ones that kind of got them the claim to fame and the one that fans definitely, definitely love. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't include probably my all-time favorite contemporary artist of the whole bunch, and that is Fido. Uh, I've already gushed at length about Fido. Uh, the one that I would say is a required listening is Doomsday Afternoon. I've already talked at length about how great this album is, so I'm not going to talk too, too much about that. He is a master of playing with different styles, of really stretching his legs and seeing what music can do. And from there, I will recommend checking out Snow Torch and Ghost Stories. Ghost Stories is one of his more earlier works and it really shows kind of like what he can do at the earlier part of his career. This was when he was more labeled as a dark gothic type of a singer songwriter. And I really, really love some of these smaller moments. And Snow Torch is the big Goliath of like the single track, 40 plus minutes worth of music. It's a great piece and it really shows just how much the man has grown. So those are all the required listenings. If all of these guys kind of connect with you or a few of these guys connect with you and you want to find artists that are similar, uh, I recommend Motorcycle as well. Uh, the Death Defying Unicorn is the one that I have to recommend 100%. It's a great, great treat and you get lost. You get shipwrecked and drifted out to sea and the band basically just abandons you to play what they want and it is terrifying but i love it um i would also recommend checking out the pineapple thief uh these guys are very great at bringing more of a modern feel to it and the ones that i would recommend for this one even though they have many great albums in their discography is variations on a dream this one just blew me away and it's probably for me the highlight of their career i would also recommend afrat uh, they only have one album out. Uh, it's No One's Word. I've already done a masterpiece theater on it, but it it just it needs to be listened to. I cannot recommend this album higher. I would also recommend I Am The Morning. It's a singer songwriter, a piano piece, and they just they provide such a great kind of contrast to those big sounds that we're so used to of providing just that that singer songwriter feel that I feel like progressive rock has kind of missed. So check out those guys if you're kind of craving for something like that. And finally, the last one that I'll leave with is probably the one that everybody in the comment section is being like, why aren't you talking about these guys, brah? Uh, and that's Angelard. I always pronounce them Angelard. I know it's Anglagadar or whatever. Uh, and it's their debut album of Hybris. This album scares me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This album terrifies me. But I friggin' love it. Like, this is one of those albums that I'm surprised of just how ridiculous and brilliant this album is. Uh, so there's a good starter pack. That's kind of the bundle to kind of wet your whistle. What artists did you feel I left out? Do keep in mind that later on this week, or depending on when you're watching this very soon, uh, I'm going to be releasing the modern progressive rock bundle pack. So some of the artists will be covered there. Let me know of your own starter pack of the contemporary progressive rock by commenting down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.